Hello everyone and welcome back to In The Spotlight. Today we have the honor of having with us a, a maestro uh, himself, uh, Christophe Papagaliatis, who is very talented, a filmmaker, director, actor, writer, producer. He's a triple threat, quadruple threat actually, <laughs> a quadruple blessing actually uh, for all producers because you do wonderful work, you've, you've really um, have proven yourself in, 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 in every role. And uh, we're very proud that uh, you are the first Greek television series to have made a deal with Netflix worldwide with Maestro, Maestro in Blue, a.k.a. Yeah. We call it Maestro in Blue, a.k.a. because it's called Maestro in Greece and Maestro in Blue on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, Welcome exactly. to New York. Thank you so much for having me. And of course, I want to add to everything that you said that it, if it wasn't for Mega Channel, which is the, 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 the real producer, uh, and the whole network and Fos Production, Stelios Kotionis, which he is the executive producer of the show, nothing would have happened. I mean, I, I know I wrote it, I directed it, I, I, I did everything on it, but if it wasn't for these people, I wouldn't be here. Absolutely, and uh, we are all ec ecstatic about it, and when we heard about it, I think everyone wanted to watch it on Mega, yeah. uh, which is doing wonderful things. Congratulations yeah. to Mega Channel. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Force Productions, which does amazing uh, yes, production work. Yes, they are a great team, and they are v they do very, very, very good productions. For all of you who don't know this, uh, Christophoros is an Omogenis. His mother is from South Africa. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my mother, she was raised in Rhodesia back then, which is Zimbabwe now. Uh, of course, her, her parents are Greek, her family is Greek, but they went there and they stayed for 25, 30 years nearly. And right now my cousins and I have family still in Cape Town. Yeah, so my father's Greek and he's from Crete and they met and then my mother came to Greece and she stayed and she gave birth to me <laughs> and brother Philip. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And you have ties with Paxus? Of course, because my great-grandmother is from Paxus and we always used to go to Paxos for, uh, for, the, for the August, every, every, every summer, for a month. We used to go at the Yaya's house, yeah. It is an amazing <laughs> island and of course the yes, scene and where your story takes place. And, and one of the most important uh, uh, asset of the show is the background of the island. And of course nothing would have happened if we didn't have all these people helping us yes because the people the the, 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 the locals in Paxos they they work like crazy uh, helping us and supporting us and doing everything we're all very excited to see the series abroad uh, because Greece has seen it so it launches on Netflix March 17 2023 everyone get on <laughs> you know watch it it's an amazing television series um, you focus on society and mm -hmm. problems of society and relationships that's what your what really inspires you mm -hmm. we know this from your past work and mm -hmm. on which was impeccable um, tell us a little bit about this television series look for me writing a script it's very difficult to write something and disregard the reality around me so always the reality and things that are happening around me are inspiring is inspiring for me and this one takes place during the pandemic. This one takes place during the pandemic, but after the lockdown. So post. when things were starting being, you know, a little bit nicer. And on took place uh, post a Greek economic crisis. Yes. And then Worlds Apart was in the middle of the economic crisis. Yeah. Yes, actually, uh, the, the, my scripts, they do Your have a social. Based on uh, yeah, a yeah, social. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, is very fascinating because it, it, everyone can relate to what was going on during that time. Yeah, it's because I, ca because I have to relate in order to write something. It's because I am the first viewer of the show or of the movie. So in order for me to sit in the night and write my script, I have to, uh, I have to be inspired by everything that's happening around me. Even if things are very, very cruel and very difficult. So tell us about but the inspiration of this one. Always, always, I'm trying to be optimistic. Always, because that's my nature. I'm trying to be esiodoxos, as we say. <laughs> uh, and all my stories and characters and everything, they all, even if it's the most, let's say, dark period of something, um, they always have, in a way, they go to the light. And choices are a result of positive things. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about this inspiration. 
uh, about Maestro in Blue. Maestro was uh, basically as it started as a love story, not only one love story, many love stories uh, in an island. But as I was writing it, I realized that it has much more uh, serious issues that uh, you can see things are happening. Uh, and this, uh, it's, a, it's about a musician who visits an island in order to create a music festival. And suddenly, of course, he falls in love with the girl. She's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, How she could is he Clelia. <laughs> I think the whole cast is Yes, the, the whole cast is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But this girl is very special. It's the first time we kind of see her. Yes, yes. Uh, she makes a debut. Her, her debut is exactly. on My Stream Blue. Yeah, and she's... Uh, oh, she captures the screen. Yeah, she does. Without doubt. Yeah, yeah. She's magnificent. But um, uh, all the issues, or the script issues, I mean, Ola, can I say it in Greek? Of course. Yeah. This is a Gringlish show. <laughs> We, we speak both, so the Greek Americans and Greek Australians, and we all speak, you know. Feel free. Τα κοινωνικά θέματα τα οποία θίγει το μαέστρο δεν θα μπορούσαν να είναι στη συγκεκριμένη εποχή απαλά. Είναι πολύ σκληρά. Έχει να κάνει με την ομοφοβία, έχει να κάνει με τη διαφορετικότητα, έχει να κάνει με την κακοποίηση, έχει να κάνει με πράγματα τα οποία βλέπουμε παγκόσμια ότι μας απασχολούν και γι' αυτό τα έγραψα γιατί απασχολούν και εμένα σαν θεατή και εμένα σαν πολίτη. Αυτού του κόσμου. I think it, 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 he he makes a very good point that the issues that he's he's really tackling in this script are about what's really going on in society mm -hmm. today, which are a lot of issues against uh, uh, you know things that women are facing uh, uh, abuse, uh, you know, abuse, yeah. domestic violence, domestic violence of which uh, all of these issues are going on today, and they are issues that we really have to uh, uh, you know come face to face with yeah. and we have to overcome and as a society we have to learn to love and accept each other because doing that together we do greater things and not to avoid not to deny the reality and what's happening around us but denial is are the biggest issue and it's an individual yeah issue. There, there is an episode episode number two the title of the episode is denial nice yeah yeah so tell us about the characters ah there are so many many characters ten characters uh, Five different love stories uh, in Paxos. Exactly, it's crazy. Well, that's your specialty. You love to yes. mix in stories. Yes, yes, I love love stories. You know, love stories are uh, like like a vehicle in order to communicate something uh, through a love story. But behind the love story hides all the social uh, backdrop of uh, of a story. And reality. Exactly. Um, and uh, it's about this guy who visits the island and he gets involved with everything. Uh, of course, we see Maria Cavogliani. She's amazing. She's, she's the, the victim of the domestic violence. Uh, we see the love story between Orestes and Clelia, which is the main story. We see, we see many, many different love stories. I mean, they, they're going to watch it. They're going to realize what I'm talking about. And it unfolds beautifully and uh, yeah. surprisingly, a lot of surprises. Yes, yes. It is very intense. Twists. A lot of twists. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, they say that the Greeks, you know, Greece has evolved. And Greece yeah. is, is, is very modern. It's a European country of which things have evolved for Greece. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Greeks that left throughout the different uh, phases of migration that date back to the 1920s yeah. and before that, a lot of these families have remained with a nostalgia and a, an image of Greece as it was in the 50s or the 60s. Mm -hmm. I speak truly as a Greek homogenes right now. And I know because I, I grew up in a community that has a different, uh, um, you know, uh, an older uh, Greek uh, mentality. Yeah. Uh, how do you think they will view modern Greece? And do you think that these are things that were, have always been going on? I think that there are things that are have always been going on yes exactly and also i think that in this story and in, in all kind of stories regarding greeks uh what we are trying to f to keep is the identity of course things evolve they change but some things never change because they're human that's why because all my stories and what i wanna all the stories i want to 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 to, to, to tell are that they have to do with about humans about relationships it's everything sentimental. So these kind of things, I don't think they change. 
The human element is very important, and of, of course, course it takes back to antiquity. And, and if you if you take it to Paxos, mm. which Paxos haven't changed that much the last 20, 25 years, let's say. For those of you who have not <laughs> been to Paxos, it is an absolute kukla in yeah. Greek. In it a, is a gorgeous, a, sophisticated a, island. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, but it has kept its identity. I mean, it has kept the buildings, the green, the nature, the sea, everything uh, is... Of course it evolves, of course, but it, it, it's very authentic. And for those of, you, those of you who have not been, I'm sure after watching this TV series, which is just breathtaking, the scenery, yeah. you will travel to Paxus and experience a real Greek island. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they must be very grateful for that. I'm grateful to them because they, they, if it wasn't for these people, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be yes. here. Yeah. So an important element, and again, you, you want the audience to see reality and learn something through. This is what mm -hmm. ancient Greek theater was doing. This is what stories do. Right. Not only me. I mean, yes. all the stories, we, we, we tell a story in order to say some things or to make some questions. Yes. Uh, to, to see yourself in a character. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all the things that... Uh, all αυτά που απασχολούν εμένα και όλες οι ερωτήσεις που εγώ θέλω να θέσω σαν θεατής, σαν άνθρωπος, σε αυτόν τον κόσμο. The most important thing is that you manage to um, be the first yeah. to have a worldwide platform on, a yeah. on, a, on one of the, the biggest streaming platforms mm -hmm. of the world, Netflix. Yep. How easy is it for Greek... <sighs> Greek directors, writers, actors to accomplish this? How easy was it for you? I don't... It's never easy, first of all. Uh, I think I was lucky as well. I was lucky to work with people who, who, who helped and who supported a lot what we wanted to do. And they watched it on Netflix and uh, they called us back and they said we want to watch the first four episodes. They just watched a trailer. And I think it was in Cannes when they watched it. And uh, we said, okay, sure, we can give you the first four episodes. And when they watched them, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they called us back and they say, we think that this is an international story. This is a story that has the identity, the Greek identity, which we like because it's a Greek show. Uh, and let's talk about having it on Netflix. And we were very, very excited, all of us me first <laughs> uh, because I was working for it for this I mean I, I knew that I was creating a show that's what I wanted uh, to travel around the world like I did with the movies because after the movies I was supposed to do my third movie then the lockdown came and COVID and everything so there, were, there was no cinema uh, so I decided to do Maestro I did the show and I wrote it knowing that in a way my big dream was for a Greek TV show to be all around the world. Mm -hmm. And I hope I succeeded. Well, you, you, you happen to manifest everything that you put your mind to. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you do it very well. And you're, are you a perfectionist? Yes, How I are am. you uh, yes, as I a am. role as a director? Yes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I mean, I never fight with anybody, but I'm a perfectionist, yes. I know exactly what I want to do. And when I don't know, I'm very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I never that. sleep. I, think I you never always sleep. know. Yes, no, but I always know. I always know yeah. what I want because you know what? When you write the story and the script, if you if you read a script of my script of mine, you're gonna see that uh, the whole direction is there. So you began as an actor, and you've and oh, many many years and ago. yes, of course, and yeah. you transitioned into, of a course, a director, a screenwriter, a screenwriter, and then a director and a producer. Of course, that the comes producer, with it, really. The, exactly, it, it, it comes, comes with it, it because yes. I know the places and I knew Paxos, course, I knew the course. people, I, yes. knew, I knew, I know how to tell the story yes. and how to build the story. So I'm a producer in that way. What role? Creative you, producer. Creative, I of course. Exactly, yeah. What role represents you the best and what role are you more comfortable in? A writer. Yep. Yeah, I've been doing the acting thing about 30 years now. I love it. It's a part of my nature. But if I had to choose, it would be the writing because it's something so, so personal and it's something that I do every night when I go back home for myself. And, and I used to do it since I was 12 years old, something like that. Did you always know you wanted to be in this industry? Yes, always. Yes. When? I think it was in Kriti when I was four years old, not even four, because we left when I was four. And my mother took me to a theater 
And I remember that day, I remember that moment that I was sitting on her lap and I was watching the show and I remember me thinking that this is what I want in my life. I was so, so happy. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, and I remember it. And it's great that your parents supported you in, in an industry. Of course. I was very lucky that I had the family that I have because they supported me, because they, were, they, 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 never, you know, they never said no. Uh, of course, at the beginning, they were not very excited. <laughs> They're like, oh, because, we thought you could be yes. a doctor or <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lawyer. I, I was supposed to go to the family business down in Crete, the, family the hotels business. and everything, yes. the tourism. But uh, I started working when I was 15, 15 and a half. I was going to school and I was off to, to Mega back then. It was the first year of Mega. And I was, uh, you know, I did the auditions and everything. Nobody knew about it. And when I was, when they, they told me that, yes, you can come here. And I said, okay, now I have to tell my parents because I was underage. They had to sign. So, uh, yeah. Uh, guess what? I just got uh, casted. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's how it happened, yeah. You see, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. He's the Astro Boslan. No. He is a star. He was born a star. <laughs> um, but if you're very talented. I'm sure everybody agrees with me, and everybody who's seen Christopher's work Thank you. Uh, agrees that the man has a talent in all of these roles. How easy is it to make film? and TV series in Greece in comparison to other European countries? It never was easy. Uh, we do have a lot of talent in Greece. Um, but w what we lack, what, what we don't have is uh, the way to organize and the way to promote and the way to communicate uh, things. Uh, this is the only thing because Greece is a very Distribution, small Distribution, you mean? Exactly, marketing wise? Exactly. Yes. Because Greece is a very small country. Yes. The history in Greece. We never, we never had a big biomechania theamatos. But a, 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 a movie small industry. country, but with great things. Yes, but we didn't. We never had a movie industry. But all, but we did. Fino's film was a I, wonderful. That was the last. That the was last the, exactly. golden decade. Exactly. But Greece is now coming back. Greece has incentives. Hopefully. Tell me a little bit about what the government is doing to incentivize uh, productions in Greece. If we didn't have the incentives, uh, Maestro wouldn't be able to, to, to. We wouldn't be able with a budget like that uh, to create the show. First of all, not only for us, for everyone, the incentives, and of course for all the foreigners to come and visit the country and shoot movies in Greece, yes. because. Greece is a movie set. <laughs> Greece is a movie set yeah. of its own. You do not need sets. Yeah. You, you have this light, you have this light, the natural light that Greece has, which is it's very unique. Very unique and the directors of photography are very unique in Greece. Yep. We have many wonderful Greek uh, uh, directors of photography, Gavras, etc. and so on. So many fabulous filmmakers and television series makers. Film has now become TV series making. Yeah. How, how easy is it to make little films? Now, mm. as a writer and a director, it's not easy at all. Believe me, because uh, I remember on my previous movie, I had uh, a 200 pages script, a movie, two hours, and I had two years to create a movie. Now I had one year and a half to create nine movies, <laughs> or a nine-hour movie. And there's going to be more. So there's a second season coming. There's a second season coming. I wrote the first four episodes, and we start next month shooting. Uh, yeah. We start production next month. So Paxus, of course, is, is something very special too because your, your grandmother's from Paxus yes. and you do, you're doing a, a wonderful thing for tourism and for, for Greece in general. You represent Greece. Yeah. Uh, do you think that Greeks have what it takes to be abroad as, as a, a worldwide filmmakers? Uh, yes, especially the young ones. I mean, uh, it's things evolve, things change and uh, always Greece had its way in creating things, always, always, always. And it's, I don't know if it's the, the history, I don't know what it is. Of course, we have many issues, many problems. Who doesn't? Yes, <laughs> but in a way we come around, in a way we, 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 we succeed. Greeks succeed when they work together. And mm -hmm. that is very important and, and film is a great industry that attests to that statement. Yes, yes. Because you all work we all work, all of us, everyone works together. When somebody works together, mm -hmm. it, is, it is a project that everyone is succeeding, everyone is winning. Exactly. And so, for the new generation. And I, I can see it now with the show, I mean, all the Greek homogenia, 
I have people calling me from Australia, I have people calling me from Europe, I have people calling me, the, the other day they called me from Latin America. I mean, yeah, from Mexico. We're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and of course, the US, the, the people here I know, Greek homogenia, and they were always very, very, very supportive. But you can see that the people they support immediately when they know that it's something Greek, exactly. they always support it, they never fight it. What is your message to um, and, uh, upcoming filmmakers and actors and what do you look for in actors and, and, and how do you cast your team? I always cast uh, in regard of talent, uh, chemistry and character. Yeah, I think those three uh, elements are very, very important. Chemistry, because especially if it's TV, mm -hmm. uh, talent, mm -hmm. which is the number one, and the character. Always, I, I like to work with nice people. I like to work with people who, who, who really love the, the, the whole environment. It's very important. What is your message to the new generation that's watching you Keep about pursuing they're gonna do their it in, dream uh, in film? They're going to do it uh, anyway, because it's something that if you really love, you always, you always do it. And keep dreaming and uh, keep, you know, uh, chasing your dreams. Christophorus Papagaliatis, Maestro in Blue, do not miss <laughs> it. On Netflix worldwide, March 17, 2023. We're waiting for all of you to tune in and start watching the series. Christopher, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Congratulations, thank you. we are thank very you. proud of you. Uh, 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 thank you so, so much for everything that you're doing for me. We, we, my most pleasure and all of our uh, 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 Omogenia loves you and you know that and we're here to support you. Nice and color. keep making stories uh, come to life with your ma you manifest and it's, uh, it's By the way, you are the same. The last time we did an interview was nearly 10 years ago. You know that. <laughs> it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago with, with Anne. With Anne. Yeah. Another favorite of yeah, mine. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of your work and you know that. <laughs> But um, thank you again and good luck and thank you, thank you, we're thank waiting you. for more. Thank you. Thank you.